This drone is super weird. At first glance, it looks pretty normal, but the moment you turn it on and start piloting, this thing doesn't just fly, it disappears. This is the anti-gravity A1. It's got two 180 degree cameras on the top and on the bottom, stitching together a full 360 view in real time, completely hiding the drone from the shot as you are piloting. And here's the crazy parts. You are seeing this view from your goggles feet, which means you no longer are locked to a single position. You are seeing it in real time, 360, head tracking and all. But that does beg the question, how revolutionary is this drone? Is it gonna completely change everything or is it just another gimmick? I've gotten to fly this drone over the past two weeks in some of the craziest terrains. From high altitude mountains to rain over water, we are gonna test and look at the good, the bad, and the weird of the anti-gravity 360 drone. Two disclaimers. One is that this video is sponsored, but not by the drone makers. So I can say whatever I want about it. And two, this is not the final unit. This is actually a production unit I was given to fly around the world with and capture shots. So anything I say or talk or comment about this drone may be subject to change by the time of final launch. But from what I was told from the team, this is the almost final units with just some final tweaks in hardware and software being tuned in. So judging by the technology that's built into this drone, you may be able to guess who designed it. And if you guess the world leading manufacturer and designer of 360 cameras, then you'd be correct. This drone is made by Insta360 and it is their first ever entry into the drone market. So when I was told about this product, I got extremely intrigued because they don't have a track record with drones yet. And with a technology as complex and hit or miss with drones, you never really know what to expect. And although this isn't a final unit, what I can confidently say is I'm probably one of the more experienced pilots right now on the planet with this drone. I have literally had to go to six different countries and capture footage from all of these different places. And that is a story for another time. But today we're talking about the drone itself. Okay, let's talk about why the existence of this drone could potentially be a big leap for drone and FPV technology. So up to this point, the way that FPV would work is that you're seeing primarily out of one camera. That fixed camera is what is broadcasting feed to your goggles. And your vision or your line of sight in the goggles is dependent on where you fly the drone. Certain drones have gimbals, have servos or things that can make the camera turn so you can look around, but you've never really been able to turn your head and see peripherally what's around you, like a Oculus Quest or a VR headset. That hasn't really been a thing for FPV drones until the emergence of this little guy. This is the drone when it's on. It's got some optical avoidance lights attached to it. One really cool one in the front between these two obstacle avoidance sensors, which is, by the way, not cameras you're seeing through. They're sensors so that the drone doesn't fly straight into something. And it's got two more on the bottom right here. Here is the motion controller that the anti-gravity comes with. It comes with a battery to power the goggles right here. This is the thing that's pretty trippy about these goggles. You're gonna see in a second. If you can see the screen here right in front of me is I am essentially seeing a 360 preview typically. If this were just a regular FPV drone, I would only be able to look straight ahead. If even if I turn my head, my view won't change. But what makes this thing special, you can look around, turn your head, look up, look down behind you, and the goggles track your head movements. So you are basically fully immersed like VR. It's really something where when you experience it yourself, you will really understand the weight of just how immersive this is. You obviously don't want this making contact with anything. You don't want any lens to be making contact with something besides like a microfiber cloth. So Into360 has built in this ingenious idea of the landing gear. This way they can place and mount the lenses in a way that still is able to capture the full 360 view with minimal stitching and will still protect the lens as much as possible. I gotta say, even with five years of flying FPV, this drone still tripped the heck out of me. Not only the ability to be able to look in different directions and that actually dictating where you fly, but also this drone only comes with the motion controller. It flies very similar 
to the DJI RC motion controller. In fact, it has a mode where it'll fly similarly to it, but the primary mode baked into this actually flies quite differently. And I'll explain a little bit more about that in a little bit. And once you get over this, whoa, this is trippy and weird and new phase, this actually opens up a lot of new possibilities. The way that this drone flies is it flies in the direction that you're pointing the remote. As a result, flying the anti-gravity becomes a full body movement exercise. It can be really cool, but there are some moments that I can see it getting in the way. So in those occasions, you can switch the mode to the conventional motion controller flying to fly it in a way where you don't have to be pointing the remote in the specific direction that you want it to fly. You simply tilt and roll it. And that is what will influence the drone to tilt and roll in those movements. So with these goggles, they built in a pretty smart function where your goggles isn't just showing you exactly where you are when you turn your head, but a mini screen also pops up when you're pointing your remote in a certain direction. That way you can not only look around while you're flying, but you can always keep track of where you're headed. Now, I wouldn't see many occasions where a drone pilot would say no to more vision. As nice as it is to be focused on one fixed point, everything around you in FPV mode is a blind spot. You don't know if someone is coming up from behind you. You don't know exactly what's to your left or right or behind you. As a pilot, you kind of have to memorize or hope that there's nothing in that area. But with this drone, you can look around, you can check if there is actually something to your left or right or behind you before flying there. And either way, this 360 camera being by nature a 360 camera, you're not just capturing what you're looking at and what you're viewing in the goggles. It's a 360 camera. You're capturing everything in your field of view. So you can kind of prep and frame a shot. And even if you don't get it exactly how you want to, or it's not in frame of your goggles, it's okay because this drone is capturing everything around it. That is one of the beauties of 360 cameras. Specs wise, the anti-gravity is rated to shoot up to 8K at 30 FPS. Now, keep in mind, this doesn't mean 8K fully on a screen, this is 8K all around the drone. So about 4K per camera. And when you export it, that turns into something about four to 2K. Like I said, I was also using a early version of this anti-gravity model. So I'm sure there, there are a lot of features I am also missing. The thing about this drone, and one of the things that makes it less of an FPV drone is that we all know how difficult it can be to document and set up a camera a tripod and all these things while you're on the go and alone. Not to mention if you do set up a tripod, it can be pretty limiting in the types of shots you can get where you can access. And that's why we love drones, which is why I want to share one of my favorite additions to my everyday carry kit, the Hover Air X1 Pro Max. It is a lightweight 8K log shooting self flying drone. So if I'm ever by myself or want to get a nice shot that a tripod wouldn't be capable of, I just take this guy, set it to one of its smart modes, such as zoom out, press the button, <laughs> zooms out five feet. Oh man, this is embarrassing. I should have cleaned up before this. Oh God, please don't look. Oh no, 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 no. And I pull my hand out, catch it, call it a day. Zoom out this is probably the tip of the iceberg. It's got orbits follow. And one of my favorites, dolly track. To get that notoriously hard backwards or sideways shot that even operators can have trouble getting, you pair that with its anti-collision sensor and its smart AI-driven features to help it fly and navigate in a way that won't crash into things. Even just the fact that this thing has a three-axis gimbal and weighs less than 200 grams, you've got a pretty crazy cameraman in your pocket. And Hover Air is currently running a sale under drones right now. So if you want to level up your content game, then Click the link in my description to learn more. The real-time 360 vision is honestly really impressive. I know Insta360 has incorporated this preview into its app so that you can preview its 360 camera's feed from a Wi-Fi tether. And there's some lag to it. You're viewing it on a phone. Like, I mean, it's cool, but it's not immersive. The way that they've been able to build these goggles so that it's transferring live footage and view of a 360 camera in like a pretty reasonable resolution, I'd say it's about 1080. I was able to fly about two kilometers with no problem of having reception when there's no objects or interference. Pretty good. I'm sure it can go even further if I could figure out how exactly to max out the specs. We'll see what the advertised actual range and transmission is as more information about this drone comes out. I'm assuming the camera that they put on this drone is gonna be a similar sensor to that of the Insta360 X5. 
So you can imagine whatever results the Insta360 X5 is getting and imagine that on a drone. So now you can take this thing into the air through gaps, untethered, untouched. One of the pros of the motion controller, I suppose, is if you're new to flying drones, this makes it really simple to navigate and it's very intuitive not having to learn how to understand the concept of flying sticks and instead just points and kind of roll and tilt the drone in the direction you want to go, almost like a cockpit controller. I'll give it to them. It's more intuitive for sure. I'll get more into this later about my honest thoughts about it. <laughs> Touching more on the pro of having an 8K 360 camera is the endless possibility in what you can do with the motion. Typically, depending on what kind of drone you're flying that does limit you to a certain filming style. 360 is not separated from this fact, but one of the beauties of 360 cameras is just how it's capturing everything around it. So if you wanted to look in one direction and then pan to another without changing the direction of your flight, then this can be a really, really great tool for getting creative shots. And you wanna play with the footage in post and figure out kind of what movements you wanna do, even better. Super cool. And on top of that, there are a good amount of different shots you can get with 360 and plan for that you wouldn't be able to with a regular drone. I think the 360 camera in general is a great creative tool to play with and there's still plenty of room to explore. And adding this to a drone is no exception. Overall, I was thoroughly impressed with the flight of the anti-gravity. I flew this in so many conditions and they actually gave me backups in case one just tanked out on me. And I did have a couple hiccups. I had moments where my goggles just shorted out, which I, is a firmware error. I had moments when I lost control of the drone, but overall it had great wind resistance. It had great position hold. And 90% of the time, if not higher, it went exactly where I wanted it to go. So I will give anti-gravity high marks in terms of flight characteristics. It is a functioning, working, well-tested drone. I'm surprised it survived this long, to be honest, for what I was putting it through. So if that's not a testament to its abilities to keep up, then I don't know what it is. All right, let's get into the cons that I picked up on this drone. So the motion controller, the joke of the FPV community. Okay, I mean, it's not that bad. I will say this motion controller is well-designed where you've got your stop record button here. You've got your take photo button here. You've got a wheel here to yaw the drone. So that will actually turn it left and right as you're doing that. And you've got a throttle up and down slider that will allow you to control it when it's going up and down. Uh, you've got some custom buttons and you've got a brake emergency return to home button. And then you've got the mode button here, which changes modes. But overall, it's a cool design. I like it. I It feels very video game-esque. It makes me feel excited every time I see it. But the way I am the most used to, and also I think most professionals and experienced pilots are out there who fly drones, like using sticks. And we'd at least like to have the option. But as it stands, the anti-gravity doesn't come with a regular controller. I don't know if they are going to make one from what I was told by a team. This is everything that's in development. So I could be wrong. Maybe they'll come out with one. But as of now, you have no choice but to use this. With a regular controller, I feel like that is really what unlocks a lot of nuanced movements for drone. But it doesn't really exist. In fact, there was a moment where I wanted to orbit around a subject with the anti-gravity one. In order to do this with the anti-gravity stock control mode, I basically have to spin in a circle <laughs> and try to point in one direction while like turning my body like I was going ring around the rosy. You just look silly and you feel kind of silly. And on top of that, I think the cons of this function is like having to actually turn your body to dictate exactly where the drone is going. It can actually make you hit somebody. If you're someone trying to view out of the screen, oh, I have to give the pros to this screen. The screen is really, really cool. But the thing that makes it funny is <laughs> in order for people to view where you're going, if you're doing movements like orbits, you're going to be spinning in circles. And people who are previewing your screen are going to have to follow you as you're filming. So a little bit funny. Not the end of the world, not a huge con, but I just wish there was a, another option besides the motion controller. On the RCC motion controller, you have this other mini trigger that pulls forward when you flick your finger up. This doesn't have it. Therefore, you can't fly backwards. So if I ever need to set up for a shot and I fly a little bit too forward, or if I'm coming in for a landing and I need to fly back, I can't. I got to turn the drone around, spin it three times and get it 180 and then 
cool ever so slightly just to adjust. It's a strange feature that's missing. I'm not really sure why they didn't incorporate it on this model, but it's not a deal breaker once again, just really annoying. The great thing about this drone is just how all encompassing in, in 360 you can see in the view. The downside is that I feel like because it's transmitting so much data, it can be easier for the drone to break up. And I did experience that a good amount of times while I was piloting. If I flew through trees, if I flew kind of behind an obstruction, it give up pretty quickly. If you couldn't guess by the form factor of this drone, it's not really designed for FPV flights. It doesn't look like a Nevada or DJI FPV. If you crash this thing, it will take a big hit from the looks of it. It feels like the same material that they'd build a Mini 4 or something with. Acro mode isn't really an option, which is why I think a lot of people in the community may not consider this drone an FPV drone. To be honest, probably not the worst thing with this style of flying. I feel like it might take people a little bit of a while to get used to flying in 360 all views available mode in Acro. Honestly, for me, I didn't really complain about it. I enjoyed the function and the flight characteristics of the drone. So this one I can't solidify as a con because I don't know if it's confirmed or not. I don't know if they're gonna include this feature in the final version, but I don't think there's a log or a flat mode. I could be wrong, I hope I'm wrong, because I'm pretty sure the X5 has a log mode that you can put in there. It's not a confirmed con, but because that's the experience I lacked, that's just what I'm gonna say for now. And with this drone being a demo unit, I'm sure there's a lot more updates and improvements that will be made to it before it hits to market. But that's been my experience so far. In my personal opinion, I don't think this is going to be replacing any FPV drones. I don't think it's going to be replacing any DJI minis or Mavics, potentially minis. But I do genuinely think that this drone is carving out a new genre for itself. It's quite impressive how Insta360 has built a drone that has this 360 capability. Granted, there are drones that do have 360 capabilities, but the fact of the matter is you can't preview the footage. You can't see through the 360 camera. You're kind of just getting what you're getting. I think really the big thing about this drone is how immersive it is. A 360 camera isn't going to replace every other lens because 360 isn't the tool for every scenario. I don't know what the professional capabilities of this is going to be. However, I will say, I think I do know who will like this drone. And I think this will be content creators who love to try new things. As a content creator, and you're not super merry over highest quality possible, then this might be a great drone to fly. And you wanna try new things, you wanna play with new angles and explore new possibilities that haven't really been touched before. This drone is gonna be great. And one of the hardest shots I think to get as an individual drone operator, in my opinion, is flying from the front and filming behind you. This drone can do that and can do it pretty well. I think that's one of the coolest things about this drone is you can fly in one direction, look the other, make sure you're getting that shot and making sure that you're moving at the right speed. I think some content creators who want to do more shots like this are gonna have a great time with this drone. Don't know if it's ready for pro cinematic shoots yet with no log and no stick controller option. Maybe a deal breaker for a lot of pro pilots, but the immersive N360 and the technology built into this drone, I think the potential for where this could take the technology of FPV in the future is massive. In fact, if more companies and developers are willing to adapt this technology, then I could see having 360 as a piloting feature, not even just a capture feature, just so that pilots know exactly where they're going and don't have as many blind spots, that's huge for safety and for flight capabilities. It'd be incredible. It makes me wonder if we are looking into a glimpse of the future, like fixed camera angles will one day be a thing of the past, almost like how kids play with camcorders nowadays because it looks cool. Will that be fixed FPV in just a few years because 360 stuff is coming out? Or is this going to carve itself its own sector in application? And now I wanna hear your thoughts. Do you see yourself wanting to fly FPV with 360 vision? Or do you think you'd prefer sticking to a fixed camera angle? Let me know in the comments. And if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you. This has been Kai, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.